Huh. And now I am. Yes, I am. All right. <sighs> Everything always seems so stressful, especially when it's not on the right page. All right. Okay. So yesterday, part of what we were supposed to do in our learning targets was talk about adjectives. And so we are going to look at one of the sentences that we looked at yesterday in our the pages that we read yesterday. Before we go on to today's pages, let's finish with yesterday's ones. All right. So there was a sentence. Let me see if I can. I, there's just too many things on my screen. Mrs. Harrison is overwhelmed with the stuff. All right. I want to make sure everybody can see it. All right. Though we live on a watery planet. Not all of that water can be used to meet our needs. That is the one that was one of the very first sentences that we read yesterday. And this is often I did tell Miss um, Abby that she'll have to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be great. Yep. I would love for that to get done. All right. So here we're going to take that first check, that first chunk, though we live on a watery planet. The author has just stuck a word at the beginning of that sentence. And usually we, we, we discourage people from just adding just something at the beginning. But the author did this for a certain reason. Though, though we live on a watery planet. Why do you think the author put though at the beginning? Lila, what do you think? Okay, so it's it's basically saying, and, and we might normally use the phrase even though, right? We tend to hear those two words together more frequently, even though. So it's telling us something is, is going on, but there's something else that is a problem. All right. So there's it could we so we could have used the what other words could we use instead of though? We could say even though. Yeah. Um, so who is this chunk about? Who are, who's the we? Oh, that doesn't help me. You just changed one pronoun for another. We, they all just said us. Humans, very right. The people, right? Even though we live on a watery planet and that we, you can't just say is us because that's just another pronoun, right? That doesn't make any sense. So it's, a, it's about humans, right? Even though humans live on a watery planet, that's who this chunk is about. Let's look, is there a verb in this sentence? Is there a verb, an action word in this sentence? Anybody at home, do you see a verb? Looking for a verb. I have some of my friends whose eyes are not on their screen, so it's hard to see the sentence if your eyes are not on the screen. Cole, help me out live right it's live live is our action word we live on a watery planet now what is the adjective think about when we, and we know verbs are action words we know pronouns are words that take place of other words does anybody see another noun in this in this chunk another noun in this chunk this sunny what noun do you see planet very good planet and that's talking about earth right so planet is our noun, an adjective. Does anybody remember what an adjective does? It's a type of word. What does it do? What does an adjective do? What? Uh-oh, I have a lot of my friends at home whose eyes are not on their screen. There you go. Better. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> it wasn't just you, but I, I thank you for listening, my friends. Oh, it's my same hands. Guys, adjective. What does an adjective do? Think, but think, think. Lyric, what do you remember? Glad to see you back, by the way. That's okay. Writer, what's an adjective? Since you're back there talking. Adjective is like a describing word. Very good. Why was your hand not up with an answer if you knew what it was? Okay, an adjective is a describing word. It describes a noun. So Sunny just told us that planet is a noun. So if that is true, right, Elena? If planet is a noun, what word is an adjective? 
What word is describing that noun? Cooper. Watery. Very good. Watery in this case is an adjective. What base word do you hear in watery? What base word or root word? Marin? Water, right? So what is a watery planet? What does that mean then? Haley? Booger? A planet with lots of water, right? Okay, so let me move to the next slide. So what is that water referring to? Think about, look at the picture a little bit. What is that water? Where, where is most of that water on that watery planet? Ellie? The oceans? Were you going to say oceans? Okay, most of that water we know are in, is in our oceans. And if you look at the planet from afar, right, what do we see? We see blue, and that blue is the oceans. And we know that 97% of that, right, is ocean. That's a lot. All right, so go back to, oops, I skipped a section. Not all of that water can be used. So if that water refers to the oceans, why can't we use that water? Why can't we not use that water? Think about what we learned yet in the last couple of days. My friends at home, why is that ocean water not able to be used? All right, Mr. Josh Carter. Because it has salt water. It's salt water, right? And salt water is not the kind of water we need. What kind of water do we need? Fresh water. Fresh water. Very good. So we can't use all that. It's even though our planet is very, very wet, very, very watery, not all of that can be used for us to meet our needs. What are our, who, whose needs, first of all? Humans needs, but is it just humans that need water? No. Every, every no. Ah, every living organism, right? Do plants need water? Yeah. Yes. Can they use can they use ocean water? No. no. Except for guess what plants? The ones that live in the ocean, right? The ones that live in the ocean, they can do that. Kelp. Um, you know, all, cor well, corals, well, corals, actually uh, an animal. Um, so we have, there are plants that can, but most plants cannot. If you take salt water and you go, your mom asks you to water the plants in your house and you grab salt or, you know, some sort of salt water or something, which you wouldn't get out of a normal faucet, right? You know, that's not what, but if we do, if you water your plants with salt water, they will eventually die. They will because they can't. Their their bot their bodies are not their their plant structure. Are just like, well, that's an entrance, folks. Can you guys see my 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 visitor? And this would um well you want to see yourself? <laughs> this is there you go. Can you see? There. Hello. <laughs> I care a lot about our kids. <laughs> Are you a carrot? I'm a carrot. All right. Thank you so much. All right. All right. She's a, all right. Wave at the carrots. And then the Mr. Ryder, did you want? You got it? All right. All right. Here we go. Hocus pocus. Sorry, we lost our focus here a little bit, friends at home. All right. So to meet our needs. Now, is this our, now just humans? Yeah. No, living organisms, right? Animals need water, fresh water. Humans need fresh water. Plants on land need fresh water. So when we say our needs, in this case, we're not just talking humans, even though when we said we earlier, all right? So if you think about, so what, are some ways that we we do use water to meet our needs? What are some of the ways we use our water? Come on, everybody's hand should be up. How do we use, we use water? Come on, you all know how we use water. How do we use water, Cernay? Yeah. 
Yes, we, it, we give it to the animals that we raise. We give it to our um, the plants that we're trying to grow for food. We drink it ourselves. Astria, what else do we do with water? We use it um, to bathe. Yes, exactly. We use it to wash not just ourselves, but we use it to wash our clothes. We use it to wash our um, our food, our animals. We use it to wash things in our house. We bathe. We bathe a lot of things, not just us. All right. Oh, oh. What else do we use water for? We have a lot of needs. We talk Lucas. What else do we do? We use water, especially lately, right? We wash at school. We wash our hands all the time. If we didn't have that good running water, we wouldn't be able to do that. Lena, what else do we use water? We use water to make things. Yesterday we learned, right, that factories and all kinds of things need water to make stuff. Abby, what else do we do? We cook with it. Exactly. Can't make that mac and cheese if you don't have that water, right? All right, Sunny, what else do we do? We use it to clean stuff, right? Not just our hands, but other things as well, right? When I do the dishes after cooking, got to wash those dishes. We wash our cars, we wash things in our house, right? What else do we do, Haley, with water? We use it for recreation, right? So on a river, I might go rafting, I might go to the lake and go paddle boarding. I might go to the a swim, you fill a swimming pool with it, right? And use it for recreation. It's not just our needs, sometimes are real, like drinking, and sometimes those needs are more really wants, right? But we still use them in a variety of ways. Could we go on for a while? Everybody could raise their hand. Everybody in this room could have a couple ideas. But alas, I am out of time. So think about um, we. what kind of water do we need? We already said this, but what is the type of water that we have to have to be able, Noah? Fresh water. Fresh water. We use mostly the fresh water. Some of that recreational stuff we're using the ocean, right? especially uh, transportation, big boats coming from other places, cargo ships can go on the ocean. But most of the time we need that fresh water. Can you not do that with that pencil for me? All right, so I'm gonna show you a picture. So if this is a watery planet, adjective, watery, this is another planet. This is Jupiter, what word, raise your hand, what word describes this? particular planet? Abby. It's, it's a gas. Gaseous is actually the adjective word. Gas is what it's made out of, but it's a gaseous is our adjective. Here's another planet. This one is not the moon. This is actually Mercury. Mercury. What word could we, so we have a watery planet, a gaseous planet. This one I'll start to give you a hit. It starts with an R. If your word that you had in your hand up for is not an R, you might want to think about it. Paxton. What kind of planet is this? No, not frosty. Um, it, Mar which one? Rusty. No? No, that does start with an R, though. Um, so look at it closely. This one's a little hard, but it gets an adjective, right? What kind of planet is this one? Elena. Rocky planet. Very good. This one. Nope. I don't want the name of it. It's a planet, but what word would describe it? What adjective? We had a watery planet, a gaseous planet, a rocky planet. What do we think this one is, Larry? No, not for, <laughs> that's a good one though. But I like how that's an adjective. Frosty is an adjective. All right. Um, let's see. Marin. A what? Ringy. You're close. It, part of your word. We, ringy is not actually a word, but um, you're on the right track. Cooper? Ringed. A ringed planet. Very good. Ringed planet. One more. Adjective. Mm. This is not Pluto. This is actually Neptune. 
And I'll give you a hint that blue is not water. That blue is not water. Bird, what do you think? Icy planet, that's a great idea. Not quite it, but Cooper? Cold, okay, good adjective, good adjective. Haley? Water planet. It's not water, actually. Good try, though. It does look like it should be water, though, doesn't it? With it not being so blue. Oh, it's Haley's turn. Shh. Dry, that's another good adjective. Not quite the one I was going for, but a good one, Lennox. Frosty, okay, I like that. Not quite the one I was going for, but it, it is frosty, you're right. It's very cold there. No, so we are the only planet that has water in a, in a liquid form. So it's not rainy. That was a good try though. We are the only planet that has liquid water. Right, so they're finding out uh, all those really cool Mars rovers are finding out all kinds of really cool things about Mars, you're right. But they're, at this time, we don't have any proof that they have liquid water. All right, Lila? Uh, so I know the Neptune seems like planet over to the sun. It, it is very cool. Uh, Cooler planet. All right. Well, that is an adjective for sure. Elena? Uh, snowy? snowy? Nope. So what is snow made out of, my friend? Uh, water. water. So it's not a liquid. You're right. But it's not. There's At this time, we don't believe that there's water on any of the other planets at, at this time. So no, never time. All right. So, well, they're still working on finding that out. It used to, they know that it used to because they have proof from used to it, but they haven't found any at this time yet. Um, Ellie. Frozen planet. Definitely a good word. All right, so are you guys getting the idea of adjectives? Yes, I think you are. All right, so you all came up with lovely ones. I, I Why should I worry about mine? All right, everybody open up your one well book. To page 20 and 21, new pages today. I liked your adjectives, so I don't need mine. It's all right. All right, page 20 and 21. Access to the well. Uh, yes. All right, I'm going to go ahead and. All right. I'm going to go back to here, but I'm going to get my doc camera open. Everybody should be on access to the well. Oh, hocus pocus. Oh, that didn't work well at here. Hocus pocus. Okay, so I see almost everybody on the right page. Not everybody. Almost everybody. Page 2021. Don't shove it. Yeah, page 2021. So it looks like this. Um, excuse me. I have some people who are who seem to be edging on being rude today. So I hope that they rethink that. All right, access to the well is the name of this section. So you're gonna read with your eyes, eventually trying to release you to reading on your own, right? So the first couple of times, right, Charlie, I read, I read it and didn't ask you guys to read it at all, right? And then we worked into me reading it and then you being able to use the caps, right? Yesterday, I read it once and then we read it together you, with your eyes. Today, I'm just gonna go ahead and read it and you're gonna follow with your eyes the first time. Do you see how the progression's going? Eventually, is Mrs. Harrison gonna ask you to read it on your own? Yes. All right, so access to the well. So I don't expect you to be looking at the... Yep, there are some bites. So I'll get to that. That, that. That's a very cool, you're right, on page 21, we have a really cool graphic. It's going to show us some pretty interesting. Oh, I'm to Mr. Charlie Tower, what's going on, my friend? Are you helping Lucas? Okay. All right. So we've got some pretty cool things. We're going to look at that in a moment. But let's listen to the left hand side first on page 21. 20. You're following with your eyes. I shouldn't see my friends at home looking at the screen. I should see my friends at home looking at the words, right, Mr. Ben? Following along with the book that you have in your hand, right? There you go. All right, here we go. Mr. Charlie, is he ready? All right, are you ready? But your eyes have to be on the page. So 
Miss Elena, your eyes are not on the page. There we go. Access to the well. Some families are lucky. They can turn on the tap for drinking water to fill a bathtub, wash their car, or water the garden. But other families around the world are less fortunate. One billion people, almost 16% of the Earth's population, have to walk more than 15 minutes to get the nearest water supply. Mr. Paxton, your eyes are not on the text. There, they gather the water for the day, just a few jugs, barely enough for drinking, cooking and cleaning. Other families don't have access to enough water to meet even those most basic needs. Mr. Fenn, your eyes are not on the text, my friend. Your eyes need to be on the word. I'm on the second paragraph on page 20. While the amount of water on earth is always the same, the distribution of water across the world isn't. Huge differences in rainfall can happen from country to country and even within the same country. Less rainfall means less water available in lakes, rivers, and aquifers. Sometimes there just isn't enough water where it's needed the most. Because water is not evenly distributed across the globe, nearly one fifth. I see some people who are looking at me reading. Your eyes should not be on my face. Your eyes should be on the words in the third paragraph. Your eyes are following on the text. Nearly one fifth of the world's population does not have enough access to enough or to have access to enough water. Many of these people live in Africa and Asia. A bucket of water weighs about 22 pounds. Imagine if you had to carry a bucket or two from a well to your house every day. Now, if you remember, not only does it say how much that weighs, but I also want you to remember that, excuse me, that they're also walking up to 15 minutes one way to get that water. So that means carrying that bucket that's 22 pounds for at least 15 minutes, one direction. So you walk with the empty pail, fill it up, and you're walking back. Now that pail has to, if you're the person who's getting the water, you have to get enough of that for your whole family, or at least for what's needed for washing, for drinking, for bathing, for cooking. Is that bucket going to go very far? Probably not. Are you going to have to take more than one trip, most likely? Yes. Now, 22 pounds, you pro most of you are probably like, hey, that's not a 22 pounds carrying it for over 15 minutes. That's a different story. It's a little bit heavy. So I want to show you this really cool graphic over here. And then we'll talk, we'll add those other parts. Hold that thought. So this is the place, this is the label here, place. This is the average. You know what average means? That means what most of, what the, time. Most of the time, right? Average daily water use per person, per person. So for every person in this particular, this is how much water is used. Now that doesn't mean every person is using that. That's how some people are using more water and some people are using less, but there's an average. So look, my friends right here. Are you looking, Ben, at your, at your book? This is that graphic we were talking about, right? That you were interested in. North America. So in that bucket, it's about two and a half US gallons. So that's like two gallons, almost two and a half gallons of milk, right? A little more than that. You know how heavy a gallon of milk is, right? Yeah. So that bucket is going to be, well, over twice because it's almost two and a half. It's over two and a half. So every person, the average daily person in North America where we live is 55 buckets per person. So if you, show me on your fingers how many people live in your house. My friends at home. Okay, so no, people, 
It says per person, doesn't say animals. All right, so I'm looking at, why is it, why am I hearing voices? I should be seeing hands, not hearing voices. All right, so I have, I have three, I have six, I have, excuse me, excuse me, raising your hand with how many people live in your house. All right, thank you, Mr. Leo. Thanks. Gavin, I'm looking for your fingers for how many people live in your house. I'm looking for fingers. How many people? Not animals, just people. All right, we got some three, I've got six, I've got four, I've got, okay, so that's a lot of, okay, so for each of those people, now you have to multiply that 55 buckets times that many people that are in your house. Is the average amount of water being used in North America? So if so, my friends who had oh goodness, I'm going to ask us to have whole body listening because this is really thought provoking. If you only have three people in your house, like I had some um, like Logan's house or some of um, your houses, three people, that would be. 55 times that, so that'd be 165 buckets of water being used per day. Mr. Nixon, turn around. Thank you. If you had, I saw some people who have six people in their family. Now that you have to, so that's, that's great. But imagine that times 55. That's over 600 buckets per day. Of, wa of water needed. Now, that's for average. Are we, is, my family isn't using that much in an average, but think about when we say average per person, all of that manufacturing we were talking about, making those computers, making those other things out of water, that's being counted in there. So not every family is actually using that much, but that is how much is being used per person. Now look at Russia. In Russia, they're only using 27 and a half buckets per person on average. Poland is only using 14 buckets per person on average. Elena, you're looking at the, at the graphic. India is now only seven buckets per person. That's how much the average person is using per day. Is that a lot less than us? Yes. Now look, Nepal. In Nepal, the average usage of water per day is three buckets. In Haiti, which is an island that off of um, the coast of, it's down, um, many of you probably um, vacation somewhat in the, in, the, in the areas, it's off of um, Florida. So, well, it, it, I mean, the Bahamas are some of those islands as well, but Haiti is down there. One and a half buckets per person, per day. Is that surprising? Yeah. Leah, what do you think? That's a lot less, isn't it? All right, now in Ethiopia, because of that access to water, only one bucket per person, per day. Now remember that bucket is only really two and a half, a little over two and a half gallons of milk, right? That gives that gives your idea. Are you doing a lot of washing? Are you doing a lot of drinking and wasting of water? No, because you don't have water to waste, do you? Okay, so think about that. I have two more little things I'm going to uh, read, and then we're going to try to figure out what our main idea and details are. North America has one third the population of Africa. So here's, so think about this. One third of the population is in North America than in Africa, yet North Americans use three times as much water. How is this possible? Nearly 300 million people in Africa do not have enough access to fresh water. We have to have fresh water, don't we? So that, that provides a problem, doesn't it? If you don't have the water you need to survive, is that a problem? Yeah. Yes, definitely. China and India are home to over one third of the world's population, yet they only have access to one-tenth of the world's fresh water. 
So even though they have, now you guys are really good at fractions now because both my fourth grade and my third graders are using fractions in math, all right? So if you know what a fraction is, you this is a more impressive idea, isn't it? One third of the world's population. So that cookie divided into three parts, right? One third, that's a pretty big piece of the cookie, but they only have one tenth of the world's fresh water. So now that's that same cookie divided into 10 pieces, which is bigger, obviously, the one third or the one tenth? Allie, that one third, right, is much bigger than that one tenth. What does that make you think about? Is that surprising? That's kind of, is it, it's a little surprising for sure. Okay, so what do you think on page 20 and 21, the main idea was that the author is really trying to get us to understand? What do you think the author wants us to understand, Haley Booker? What are, what are these two little pages about? So is it about us, how we're treating it at the moment? No, not quite. Miss Sunny, can you help us a little bit? Okay, so how much water different places use and have, right? Okay, so let's take out our workbooks for a minute. Page 21, you're gonna see this page right here. Take that on out, my friends. So, why again, but why is it that they don't have water? In the very beginning of our reading that we did, is it is it is is it because they're poor and they don't have water? No. no. Why is it that there are places that have less water than athletics? Why did it tell us? How did that happen? Okay. It, that is a factor that some people have to walk to get to the water, right? Because it isn't near their where they live, right? So that's one of our, that's a great supporting detail, isn't it? That is one of those, that was one of the things the author told us that told us that not everybody has that access to water. So before we get too far, should we talk about what that word access means? We probably should, especially since it's in the word, since it's in the title, right? What does the word access actually mean? If you have access to something, what does that mean, really? Abby, what do you think? You're able to get it, right? So access is an important word for us to know. It means able to get something. So if you have access to your house after it snowed, you could get into your house if you had access to the road some of you had to get to the road right had to shovel and had to maybe plow or do whatever so you could get to the road so you had to have access to be able to get to something you can you'll have to wait because i just sent someone but in a bit mr charlie for sure access is to be able to get it so in this case it says access to the well now do they really mean be, to be able to go to a well for some people, actually, yes. But what does it re what did, what do you think this really meant when it said access to the well? It doesn't really mean just one place, does it, Max Fox? What does it really mean? It means like when like so um I don't really know how to explain that. Um so when you have access, so like some things are not accessible, like like when you want to go to the news and news. 
Okay, you can't you can't have it, right? Yeah. Okay, so access, but what does it mean by the well in this case on our page? It says access to the well. Well, not everybody has an actual physical well, right? So Robert, what is, in this case does it mean? To fresh water, that one well, right? That source that the whole world has to our fresh water. Good job, Robert. So think about right here in this paragraph. I'm going to reread it. I would like everybody to read this set to look at the second paragraph because that's going to help us with our first, our, our main idea. Ready? While the same amount of water on earth is always the same, the distribution of water across the world isn't. Huge differences in rainfall can happen from country to country and even within the same country. Less rainfall means less water available in lakes, rivers, and aquifers. Sometimes there just isn't enough water where it's needed the most. So it says right here, if you have less rainfall, you have less water in lakes, rivers, and aquifers. It, what are lakes, rivers, and aquifers? There are where we get our, not just water, but our fresh water, right? That's where we're getting our fresh waters, the water that we can actually use. So there was a word called, it said distribution. Distribution has a root word. The root word is distribute. So distribute, when Mrs. Aubin asks me in math to hand out all the papers or hand out the, you know, whatever it is, I am distributing them. So what do you think the word distribute in this case means, Madison? To, to give them, okay. So it's to share or spread. And in, 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 in Mrs. Auden's room, it's to hand everything out, right? It's to hand, distribute those papers, to hand out those papers. In this case, it says the distribution of water. Is somebody handing it out? No, it's coming out of the sky, right? It's, it's somehow being um, precipitated down, right? Yeah, somebody's not actually handing out that water. It's just coming from the sky, right? Rain or snow or does every place get the same amount of rain? No, think about deserts. Do they necessarily get a whole lot of rain? No, but think about the rainforest. Yes, right? A lot of rain. So is the distribution equal? No, especially even in our, think about our country. Arizona does not get as much water as say Florida, right? Florida gets a lot of rain. Arizona, not so much. So if they don't have as much rain, they're not gonna have as much fresh water, are they? So they're gonna have to get it from somewhere else or they're gonna have to use less, right? They might have to use less or somehow get it from someplace else. All right, so now that we're thinking about this, here's your main idea. Does everybody have the same access to the water? No. And why is that? Because the water isn't distributed equally, right? So here we go. Are you guys ready? We're going to write this down. All right. Water. And in this case, we really mean what kind of water? Fresh water. But we're going to just write water for now because we have a lot. We have a lot to write down here. I'm going to make sure this is bigger, not for my friends here necessarily, but definitely for my friends at home. Did I just mute myself now? All right, let me make this a little bigger. My mute button was exactly where the other one was. All right. All right, so I know there's a one and a two here. We're just going to go ahead and work across it, though. All right, so water isn't. And now what was that word we used? Distributed. It isn't distributed equally. Where is it distributed equally where? Okay, so on earth, right? So, oh, there's our conjunction, right? Telling us, uh-oh. So what? So what happens to the people? 
So some places and people have what? Have less, have less and some have uh, more. more. All right, so that's what the author's trying to tell us because it's not, and is it anybody's fault that it's not, that they don't have as much water? No, it's just the rainfall, right? It's just the way that precipitation works on earth. Sometimes, and sometimes we get a lot of rain all at once and it floods and then we're not so happy. And then sometimes we don't get rain at all. And then we, especially here, we get worried because then things dry out and then we worry about forest fires. So even within just one area, you can have times when there's a lot of water, a lot of, lot of rain, a lot of fresh water, and times when there's hardly any, just based on the time of year or, or in a long period of time. That water can change. All right. So what are some of the supporting details that we said? So Mr. Lennox said one. What, Mr. Lennox, what did we say was a good supporting detail? Well, that some, and what do they have to do to get to it? Um, walk. walk. All right. So I'm going to go back to that first paragraph there. Um, no, maybe that's the first paragraph. Uh, where was it? Okay, so 16%. Where did I get that 16%? Did I make it up? Oh, I got it from the text, right? Cole even pointed it to it. Good job, Mr. Cole. Everybody, can you find the 16% in the first paragraph? Point to it. I want to see explicitly you showing me where that text is. So 16% of the earth population has to do what? Has to walk more than 15 minutes. Are you right? Are you filling this in? to get water for the day. Okay, so that's one, just one detail. One detail that proves that, right? 16%. So that, so we are really good at fractions now. We don't know a lot about percents yet, but 10% is one tenth. So that means between one tenth and one and two tenths of the population on earth, the whole planet have to walk to get to water. 15 minutes one way carrying that heavy bucket, All right? Does that sound fun? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Do you, yeah, you so would you like doing that every single day, though? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Later on in the year, I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you a, a, a chance to see how that feels. Yeah. And and, pro, and probably what most of you will at first will realize that, yeah, for a short term sort of thing, not that bad. But every single day, several times a day, is that, and you have to. It's not a choice. It's not for fun. It's not to get a workout. It's because that water is necessary. All right, everybody open back. Oh, if you don't have your book open, I, most of you do, but you don't have it, you're not looking at it. What other detail from the text supports our idea? that water is not distributed equally. And so some people have more and some people have less. Look at the paper, look at the book. I like Cooper, like, like you got it out, good job. Look at page 20, 21. 
Who else sees a, some sort of detail that they can get from the text? So Mr. Leo, looking at the page 2021. Mr. Gavin, looking at page 2021. See if you can find a sentence that we can write down as a supporting detail. Mr. Logan, thank you for opening up. Yep, 2021. See if you can find it. I like Ben scouring it. Good job. Reread. And it doesn't just have to be in the paragraphs. It could also be one of the other ones. Haley Booker, what do you see? I love that. China and India. Can I add just a tiny bit to that, Haley? They are have one third of the world's population, but um, they only have, there's that word access, right? To one tenth. Good job, Miss Haley. Couldn't have done that job any better. Awesome. Lucas, do you have another idea? All right. So that kind of went along with uh, the one about having to walk, right? All right. I'll take that one. Some people are lucky. That, and that's not in my opinion. That came out of... Uh, text, right? That's not just my idea. That's not Jed Lucas's idea, right? All right? Some people that are lucky, they can just turn on the faucet and get the water they need. Which, which one are we more like? We're a lot like the lucky people, aren't we? Yeah. When we go over to what Mrs. Aubin says, go wash your hands, what do we expect? We expect water to come out of that faucet, right? And then when you guys go ask to fill your water bottle, we expect water to come out of it, right? And and you well right and writer has a good point. Writer said if and it does that the water doesn't come out, then we would expect then 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 somebody would be called to fix it, right? Then there would be something. I bet uh, you know like at Logan's house, if all of a sudden Logan's um, water was not working, Logan, would you, you what would you have to do? If you're my furnace, I think I know. We normally call because my furnace and my washing machine broke. See, and so you had to get somebody else to help, right? You got, yep, and the washing machine broke, so did uh, you got to get a new one or get it fixed, right? We're waiting for it. it You're waiting for waiting it? For okay. Is that a struggle a little bit? The belt broke. The belt broke, so they have to replace the belt? Yeah. So is that our first messed up a while ago, too. Gotcha. Okay, so again, can we expect things to work? Yes, in fact, we get a little cranky when all of a sudden they don't, right? I remember when Mrs. Harrison's water heater broke and she got uh, last year and she got up and she took went, go, went to take her shower. And I was super cranky because my water was freezing, but I still had water to take the shower, right? I still took my shower, but I was right, at least I had the water. But I was all cranky because it wasn't hot, rather warm, right? It's all in perspective, isn't it? So remember, how we spend our, how we treat that water though affects who? How we, it affects everybody, right? Because all of the water is one, is connected, right? All that water is at one well. So even though we're on the lucky side, we still have to do what? We still have to be careful, right? We still have to be careful with it. All right. So um, does anybody else have another detail from the text? I see some people want to share some things. Noah, do you see a detail from the text? Um, 
I'll try to get to those hands that were up that wanted to share, but let me get through the, the job. Very good, because that helps explain how it's distributed, right? Good. Less rainfall means less water in, oh, I, I, I was gonna say available, but I'll say less water is in lakes, rivers, and aquifers. Let's talk about that word aquifer again. Who remembers what the word aquifer meant? Do you remember, Lila? Well, it is another source of water, but it's in a special place. And also, um, it's underground. And also, uh, we're on the Okay, but we know of what though? One tenth of what? Water. Of water, yes. If you want to add the words of water, you can. So let's talk about that. So aquifer. So what happens to the water? So it rains, right? Or snows or whatever, and then it melts, right? And then that water goes to the rivers. The rivers go to the lakes or the ponds or the eventually goes back to the ocean, right? But a lot of that water does what? Some of it evaporates up and then some of it does what? Soaks into the ground. A lot of it does actually. A lot of it soaks into the ground and then that water ends up going, and we talked about how much of that water of our fresh water is actually underground. Remember how if you have a well, your well is getting the water from an aquifer. It's an underground amount of water. Okay, so less rainfall means less water in lakes, rivers, and aquifers. Oops, there should be an S on there. Whoop. All right, anybody else? I see a really great one on the bottom of page 20. Bottom of page 20. There's a really good detail that really hits home about all of this stuff. How some people have more and some people have less. What do you think, Lila? I think it, um, oh, and then I'm gonna call him Ben. Ben, do you have your, I'll call on you next, bud. It's not, it's not, I can't, I can't. Ethiopia? Yeah, um, has, um, only access to one bucket of water. Okay, Ethiopia. I didn't spend, I didn't spell it all. I didn't, and I didn't spell it correctly the whole time. Ethiopia, there's an extra I in there. Um, so uses one bucket. No, I had to put in that. I had to put the extra I. There's two I's. Uses one bucket per person per day. Should we compare that to something else? To, to somebody else to make, and then you want to do to Russia. Okay. Russia uses how many buckets? 27 and a half buckets per day. I'm not going to put the whole thing because you get the idea. All right. So does that compare? Does that, those are some good details the author put in there. To make a comparison, Ben, did you have another thing that you wanted me to add? Yeah. Um. Can we add? I'm just gonna ask you, but can we add average daily water uses per person? Yes. Right, so that's 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 what we were doing here. When Ethiopia uses one bucket per average, you want to add another one, another detail there, Ben? Did you want to add another line for that one? Which one did you want to use? North America or or Haiti or what would, which one would you like to add? We had Ethiopia and Russia. If you want to add one more, we can. Let's do North America. All right. I like that because it makes a really it's a really big difference, isn't it? because 55 buckets is almost twice 
that 27, right? All right, I'm gonna try to get, sneak one more in. Not from that graphic though, but thank Ben, that was a good one. I want, I'd like one, I would like it because I'd like that one on the bottom of page 20. There's a really good one on the bottom of page 20. Can anybody find it? I know Marin was looking for it. Abby, what do you think? Okay, that whole paragraph, but I'm going to take off the beginning, okay? But I'm going to take it nearly one-fifth of the world's population doesn't have enough access to fresh water. Deborah Coates, please go to your classroom. Deborah Coates, please go to your classroom. All right. That's a great one, Abby. It's a great one. So that really gives us an idea. Now that we're really a good experts, Mrs. Aubin has taught us well, and um, our fourth grade class has also been, our fourth grade math students are also learning about fractions, right? We really have a clear idea of what one fifth of a pop of everybody looks like. That means one out of every five people on earth doesn't have enough access to the water they need every day. Hopefully you're feeling pretty lucky again. Lucas, you wanted to share something, buddy. Oh, I'm looking into Lucas. Okay, and how and how did you guys solve that problem? So Lucas said at one time they didn't have um, hot water, and then uh, a couple months later they didn't have any water. Do you know how they solved that problem? A new tank, and that probably wasn't cheap. That probably was kind of expensive, wasn't it? How was it to deal without that water for a while? You had to buy it, right? So that was a financial hardship. You probably had to buy, and it was probably not, I mean, that's, you don't realize how much water you use until you have to start buying it, right? And bringing it to your house. All of a sudden that makes a, makes a big deal. Mr. Charlie. All right, so Charlie was telling about a time his um, grandma was having trouble with her well, and so that they had to supply her with some water until it got fixed. So I don't know, sometimes kids love when it snows a lot, so they get to play in it. The adults had to do all the work, so sometimes we don't love it so much, except for, I don't know how about Mrs. Aubin felt, but every time it snows like that, I know that my well and, my, and the water that we have in Conifer is gonna be a lot more for a lot longer from that snow because that snow's gonna eventually do what? Melt. Melt, right? And so even though it's a hardship for sometimes for some people, the adults and and definitely so we had to work through it and you guys probably enjoyed having fun. It I always feel better because I know later on when I turn on my faucet at my house, likelihood is that water is going to come out and I bet for a lot of you as well. All right, so you guys did it. So do you see how the author gave us a lot of good details to back up that idea. Do you think that author thinks this idea is pretty important for us to understand? Yes, because they gave us lots of details to back this up. And if you, uh, guess what? There are even more of them that we didn't write down. But these were some really, and I like that you guys came up with them yourselves. That's good. All right, so I want you to turn for a second to page. I think it's your page, just your very next one. So 22. Yep, it's your 22. 
Um, yeah, I can't, but I'm about, I'm about to change it for a second here. All right. Ooh, I'm about out of time. All right, I know, I, I'm, I know that. Okay, I'm gonna switch. So if you've got some of those ideas here, I'm gonna do, yep, there you go. All right, page 22. Uh-oh, Mrs. Harrison's pulling out a note catcher. Uh-oh, what do we think's gonna, this is 22. Um, so you can go out, all right. I just handed, well, I just handed this to that. Uh-oh, hocus pocus. Okay, so Mrs. Harrison got out a note catcher, page 22. What does that usually give to you as a hint? When we fill out a note catcher, what's going to happen later? Sonny? We're going to write something, right? Later on. Are we always spend our first unit doing what? Getting all of our knowledge, getting stacking up on good ideas. And then we after we get those great ideas, we have to we learn to figure out how a way to share those ideas, right? And we share them in a writing form. So the research question, hey, um, ladies, we're not talking. The research question says, why must we act now to protect our water supply? Now, did we really talk about protecting water today? No, we didn't. We talked about how we don't always, not everybody has the same ability to get it. So, but I'm asking you, it says access to water. We're going to learn about several different reasons that we should protect our water. And one of those reasons is because not everybody has access to water. So what is the problem that we just learned about? That's all I want to get to today. Is what is that? It says, what is the issue people are facing with water? What did we learn today? Miss Lila, what did we learn today? I love that. So here's our problem. Not all, you're writing this for me. Not all people, people where? People where? Around the world. have and then what's that word we were learning about today to be able to get to it access to the water they need that is our problem not all people around the world have access to the water they need that's what I needed to to get down. We're going to continue to add information to this note catcher as time goes on. But that's the important part for today. So please get that sentence written. Not all people around the world have access to the water they need. All right. Did I give you some good food for, as they say, food for thought? Things to think about? The next time you go turn on the faucet, what are you going to think about? And how lucky we are, right? All right. Okay, my friends, did everybody get that written down? Make sure you get that written down. All right, my friends, you did great today. Thank you so much. Hopefully you got your brain thinking so that when you guys turn on those things. All right, I will see you guys um, either at math or at all block or at OG. Today we have OG and all block at our normal times. All right, so everybody's. So we'll see you um, later, my friends. Bye-bye.